The Trains to the Past, Series 2, Part 2. Written and read for you by Emily Z. Prologue. William. Laura. 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 William had yelled Laura's name so many times now, it was the only thing on his mind. There had been nothing else on his mind except for her since she disappeared. Laura had been standing right there, counting her steps. But then she'd slipped on a, well, something. And then she'd screamed, and then she'd disappeared. Into thin air. Well, maybe not, but no one could see her anymore. William secretly already knew who was likely behind this. But how could he just walk up to his grandfather and younger Laura to say, uh, Hi, I'm pretty sure that Jackson's just led us since he lives here. He's probably watching us right now, and he's also probably the reason Laura disappeared which means that he's probably holding her captive. But, you know, only probably. Right. He could see how smoothly that conversation would go. He kicked a rock angrily, not sure who to be mad at. Lara? For going ahead without warning them of her plan? His grandfather? For making impatient sighs every few minutes and suggesting they go on and come back later? Younger Lara? For being so excited and eager to follow older Lara's crazy plan? Jack? For being the biggest jerk in the world? Or himself? For not knowing enough. For not being able to come up with a plan himself. For making Laura go in front. For dragging her into this. For taking younger Laura into his mess too. For concentrating too much on the small problems. For not being more alert when they entered a villain's hideout. For still not being able to think of a solution yet. Luckily, his thoughts on who to be mad at were interrupted by younger Laura's scream. The Train to the Past Laura. I try whispering, then talking, calling, yelling, screaming. Nothing works. My gag is certainly doing its job very well. Too well. I finally settle for making weird grunting noises. It makes me sound like a pig, but hey, at least I'm making sound. Jack rolls his eyes at me and loosens the gag from my mouth in one swift movement without touching me. He makes a strange hooting bird call, and the owl, Hawk, why do you name an owl that, flaps down and settles onto my head, his talons scraping and pressing hard against my scalp. Talk, Jack orders, tossing the gag away and stepping into my line of vision. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Because if not, I'd be happy to tie you up even tighter. I shake my head furiously and open my mouth. I close it again. Then open it, and close it. I don't know what to say. If I don't talk, I'll be tied up again. But there's nothing else on my mind except William and the train, and I'm pretty sure that Jack isn't looking for a Hi, my favorite color is blue kind of conversation. William's here, I blurt out. There. Info about William, but nothing too detailed. Jack snorts. I know that. So our younger Laura and former conductor. Your friends need new names. Graven's hunting them down right now. Guess you'll be getting some company soon. You're threatening us with a bird? I ask. Jack's shadow looms over me. Raven is not a bird. He bellows, finally showing a sign of emotion. I scoot away from him, deeper into the shadows. Who is Raven, then? Jack smiles, his teeth glinting against the dim sunlight, and answers, My dragon. William. I let out a yelp of surprise at the giant form of a dragon. Or rather, a thing that looks like a dragon advancing towards us. It's smaller than an average dragon, not that I've ever seen one, and midnight black with a few patches of gray, dark blue, and silver scales along its back. It has bird wings that don't look capable of flying, a short tail, and what looks like long golden red feathers growing straight out of the top of his head. But it still has all the qualities that make a dragon absolutely terrifying. Claws, teeth, Low, rumbly growl, menacing look. Laura, the one currently with me right now, screams again and grips tight onto my left arm. Even Grandfather sidles a step closer to us, whispering instructions out of the corner of his mouth. Don't let him see that you're planning an attack. I'm not. Make very little movement and noise. Search for something that will distract it, and if you're able to, find an enclosed space where it cannot reach. Grandfather. Yes? Do you remember when I became conductor? And you made me promise to follow your instructions any time there's a life or death situation. Yes, William. I nod slightly as confirmation, then turned to Laura. How much do you trust me? 
Uh... Laura. I trust you more than I've ever trusted most of my friends. Like, before I was broken. Wow, that was unexpected, but kind of nice to have some trust. And if I die, I say to Grandpa, there's a piece of paper hidden under the biggest panel in the control room. You are not going to die. My grandfather whispers loudly. A little too loudly because the dragon swivels his head around and bends down closer to us. Uh-oh. I sure hope so. I whisper, then grab both their wrists and pull them forward and around the dragon's legs, straight into the entrance. I'm coming, Laura. We're coming. Laura. Crash. Thud. Thump. Ouch. Shush. Roar. Where's Laura? <laughs> I shout through my gag, hoping to catch your attention, because I know these voices anywhere. William! His grandfather! Laura! <laughs> I shout even louder this time. I'm thankful Jack isn't paying attention. He's bent over a rock table, examining a bird or animal of some sort. It's letting out very loud squawks of complaint. But then again, maybe William won't hear me over the bird either. I scoot around, hoping to get a glimpse of the animal. And it looks amazing. It's about as big as your ordinary chicken or duck, only it's a lot more graceful. It has beautiful amber, gold, red, and orange wings bigger than its entire body, with a long, swooping tail that swishes out from behind him. His eyes are black, and he has a pointy beak. It squawks again when it realizes that it's being watched. Jack turns around with a smug look on his face as usual. He whispers a call to the bird, A phoenix? I thought those were only a myth. And it soars around the cave once, then flaps away. It flies back a minute later, but I hear the sound before I see the people. Ow, stop it. I'm moving, I'm moving. Stop jabbing me. Roar. This is my favorite shirt. Ow, I said stop. Roar. William, calm down. Ow. Oh, no. The phoenix is flying slowly, and in front of him, being jabbed by its beak and batted by its wings, is Laura, and William, and the former conductor, and Raven. William, the bird beak in my back is very uncomfortable, but everyone falls silent as we see Jack propped up casually by his elbows on a rock ledge, and Laura tied and gagged in a corner, furiously trying to shout things at us through the cloth wrapped tightly around her mouth. The bird flies in circles above our heads, and the black dragon bird arches his neck down in order to swish into the cave. Let her go, I demand, drawing myself up taller, which still isn't anywhere as tall as Jack, and squaring my shoulders, trying to look like Grandpa always did. Jack hops off his ledge and walks up to me, standing taller as well and towering over me. He looks down his nose at me, the very irritating look showing that he knows more, can do more, is cooler, better, and that he is well aware. Let her go. I see again, more of a command this time. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch Laura frantically shaking her head and twisting her body around to point slash gesture towards the door. I barely manage to leap out of the way as younger Laura shrieks and yanks grandfather away from the cave entrance. Jack makes a low purring sound in his throat. The purr turns into a growl, and a ginormous tiger, who looks like some big hybrid cat. How is that possible? bounds into the cave and smashes its paws down right where I was standing. It inhales deeply. On the next growly command, it exhales a giant plume of fire. Lara. The cave is filled with smoky air, and I hear coughing all around me. Vaguely remembering my school fire safety lessons, I crouch near the floor and try feeling my way toward the entrance. I bump into a pair of legs and jump, or crawl, away when I realize that they belong to Jack. He appears to be fine, standing in all the smoke and fire and chaos. The phoenix is swooping around his face, casting a dim light across his features, and seems to be clearing the air for him to breathe. Raven, the dragon bird, is seated patiently behind Jack, ready for command. Give up. I nod and cough at the same time, my brain only on one thing. Air. I need air. Fresh air. There is so much smoke. Too much. William! I try to shout but end up inhaling more of the smoke. I curl into a heap, coughing even louder. Jack roars an order at Raven, and the next thing I know, I'm being lifted in the air by enormous talons. I struggle for a minute, but give up. Who am I kidding? 
I can't fight a dragon alone. Especially when it's listening to Jack. Especially when I'm in desperate need of air. Don't move. Jack orders, and I get the impression that he's not only talking to me. Jack roars again, and the dragon starts to move. I see a glimmer of light before I accidentally inhale again and slump over, passed out in the claws of a dragon. William. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm not dead? Yes, I am very much alive. I sit up on my head of clouds, blackness spotting my vision. No, no, no. A voice tells me as a pair of hands punch me down again. Sitting up is a very bad idea. Refusing to stay down when my friends are in danger, I roll over onto my stomach and push myself up. It's slightly better, but not by much. A rush of dizziness swarms over me, and I crawl behind the nearest bush to throw up. Oh, yes. Very dignified. The same voice comments from above me. I whip my head around to glare and find myself staring at Jack. Great. Why? I gasp between coughs. Why what? He retorts. How dare he act so innocent? A surge of anger floods through me, and I stand up. Why? Why did you blow up the train? Why did you try to kill us? Why did you have to be such an idiot and go through that door in the first place? Why are you so jealous? Why are you hurting my friends? Why do you hate the world? Why are you raising dangerous animals? Why did you run away? Why do you live at the Forbidden Blue Moon's Lake? Why are you the biggest? Jack glares at me with hatred I've never seen before. His jaw locks, and before I can react, he lunges forward and grips both my arms his nails digging into my skin. I can practically feel him shaking with anger. It's the first time he's ever let his anger break through the cool, calm brother I've always known. Why do you have to make assumptions and spread rumors about how evil and dangerous I am? Why do you think you know the entire story when you've only seen half of it? You want proof? Fine. I blew up the train because there was something on it that would have killed you more painfully and more certainly than the explosion would have. I never tried to kill you at all. I went to the door to see what happened to mother and father after everyone announced them dead. I'm jealous because you got what I deserved, only because I was different from everyone else. I think my brain might have just stopped working. I've never intentionally hurt you or your friends. I never planned to. I can't control what my animals do. I hate the world because they hate me, and it's a lot easier to live without having to deal with humans. I invite you into my home for five minutes and this happens. I'm raising these animals because they're hurt and unwanted like me. I ran away so I wouldn't have to endure the sighs and scolding and disgust that looks from everyone. I live at Blue Moon's Lake because it's the only true home I've ever known, with the only true family I've ever had and will have. Whoa. There. Happy. Jack releases his grip on my arms and steps back, breathing fast. My mind sure is taking its time to process everything I've just heard. I blink at Jack in astonishment. His speech certainly cleared a lot of things up and gave me a new perspective on who he is, but I'm more focused on his face. As he was touching me, he has gotten shorter, his shoulders less broad, his hair now blonde with streaks of black like I couldn't decide what color it wants to be. The K-pop look now gone from his features, almost an exact copy of me. Lara. I can't. I don't. What just happened? What just happened? I remember waking up to William and Jack glaring at each other. Then William started yelling at Jack, and Jack started yelling at William, and... Jack changed. Changed so that he now looks like William. Of course, there's still a bit of Jack left in him. He's still a bit taller than William, with broader shoulders, some blackish brown in his hair, and a more regal posture. But other than that, I can barely tell them apart. I back away from them, and my foot slips off the boulder I woke up on. I slide off and land ungracefully, my dance teacher would be disappointed, on my knees. Younger Laura helps me up absentmindedly, staring at William and Jack as well. The conductor steps forward and opens his mouth, but then shakes his head slightly and backs up like his two grandsons have just sprouted four arms or something. The moment is interrupted by Raven, roaring his head off at the sight of his owner. Jack darts away from William and is immediately transformed back into Jack. No sparkles or magic glitter, though. Jack reaches over and pats Raven's neck, growling to him softly. Comforting him? He turns around to stare at us. Tiger Cat, Phoenix, Raven, and Hawk at his side. Bye. Wait, what? Why? Where are you going? 
Ask panicked. Jack knows this place more than any of us, and who knows if there are more wild animals out there. I'm going to find mother and father. They're not dead. Not yet. So don't waste your breath attempting to talk me out of it. And don't come with me. And with that, he marches out of the clearing of purple trees. The End Thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed the Trains of the Past, Series 2, Part 2. Links to the rest of the story are in the description section below. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with family and friends. Series 2, Part 3, coming soon.